But ChatGPT and similar programs are, by design, unlimited in what they can learn, which is to say, memorize. They are incapable of distinguishing the possible from the impossible. Unlike humans, for example, who are endowed with a universal grammar that limits the languages we can learn to those with a certain kind of almost mathematical elegance, though these programs learn humanly possible and humanly impossible with equal f faculty. Let me see. Recently, domain general recurrent neural networks without explicit linguistic inductive, inductive biases have been shown to successfully re reproduce a range of human language behaviors, such as accurately predicting number agreement between nouns and verbs. We show that such networks will also learn number agreement with unnatural sentence structures, i.e. structures that are not found within any natural languages in which humans struggle to process. These results suggest that the models are learning from their input in a manner that is substantially different from human language acquisition, and we undertake an analysis of how the learned knowledge is stored in the elites of the network. We find that while the model has an effective understanding of singular versus plural for individual sentences, there is a lack of unified concept of number agreement connecting these processes across the full range of inputs. Moreover, the weights ha handling natural and unnatural structures overlap substantially in a way that underlines the non-human-like nature, nature of the knowledge learned by the network. You know, I... Can we just... It's a fucking large language model. It's not human. It's not going to be human-like. If you expect the large language model to be a human, you will be disappointed every single time. For example... This study examined the extent to which a long, short-term memory network trained on raw text learned about agreement phenomena across a number of languages. They found that, given the right training data, the model was able to predict long-distance agreement on both natural and semantically nonsensical but syntactically valid sentences. Similarly, they investigated the ability of such models to track syntactic state within subordinations and garden path sentences. Treating their networks as psycholinguistic subjects, they found that given enough data, the models responded to subtle cues in a manner comparable to human subjects. These results suggest that although an LSTM, a long short-term memory, handles its input in a purely sequen sequential manner, it is able, nonetheless, to learn about phenomena that have traditionally been represented within hierarchical data structures. These people suggest that, in fact, such sequential models have advantages over hierarchical alternatives as cognitive models of language processing. Using evidence from reading time and ERP studies, they argue that the ability to accurately model the probabilities of words in context is more important in a psycholinguistic model than the particular architecture employed. Here it's talking about like rules, like in the, in the middle here, linguistic rules. And, like, numbers. This isn't really important. Basically, this is just saying that they're able to learn linguistic rules that humans can't, such as, like, reversing the order to mean that something happened in the past. So, like, let's say instead of they trade merely in probabilities that change over time, we want to we say this happened in the past. It would be time over change that probabilities and merely trade they. And it says that the computers were able to handle this. The humans were not able to handle this um, because they learned this language called Edun. And Edun has some character characteristics that are natural and some characteristics that are unnatural. And the humans struggled with the non-natural ones. They merely trade in probabilities that change over time. But remember, we literally just read that this is the most important part, is the probabilities for a psycholinguistic model. So, for this reason, the predictions of machine learning systems will always be superficial and dubious, but that's... that's wrong. Because these programs cannot explain the rules of English syntax, for example, they may well predict incorrectly that John is too stubborn to talk to means that John is so stubborn that he will not talk to someone or other, rather than that he is too stubborn to be reasoned with. But this is actually... so... dumb. I'm not gonna say... Oh my gosh. I'm not going to say, oh my gosh. I don't, I don't want to say that 
they're being dumb ling- linguistics. But, you know, at the end of the day, people that are deep in their field are going to be deep in their field. And people that are new are going to do new things. But what Codex taught me was that the li- actual words are important because the words themselves hold different, like, ideas and dif- different entropy and different, like, data behind them, even down to the down to, to a single letter. letter. So right here, remember the engrams, right? Let, let's go ahead and go along the engrams. So John is, we'll just go ahead and go word by word, but, like, I want you to just be picturing us doing this by engrams. So John is too stubborn to talk to. Right? So this is our order. These are the these are our engrams. That means that John is so. Where did we get John is so? Where did this come from? Right? John is not so anything. John is too stubborn to talk to. Rather than that, ready? Look, he is too stubborn. Right? He, John, it's a pronoun. So we'll just pretend he is John. He, right, right up here, John is, is too, too stubborn, stubborn, too, 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 ready? Be reasoned with, talk to. Passive, be reasoned with, talk to. Active. That's the only difference. The rest of the engrams are the same. John is too stubborn to. Guess what? John is too stubborn is the important information here. John is too too stubborn too. That that John is too stubborn too almost answers the whole thing. You don't even really need to talk to. Like he's too stubborn. Like he's just not gonna do it. You just don't even like you you don't even need to bother, right? He's just too stubborn. And you already know by that point, like what the idea is. Not say John is so stubborn, because right here it would be John is so stubborn, because this would be more of a complaint then. John is so stubborn that he will not do this or the other. Like that's complaining. Whereas this is is a is a descriptive statement. So Chomsky up here is trying to be like pred- predictions and descriptions and explanations. But homeboy's li- uh, not just Chomsky. All these li- linguistics. Chomsky's like ninety four. I gotta stop digging on him so hard. But like, they're they're saying all these things and they're literally not even following the rules that they're laying out up there. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's let's let me ugh, let me just read what they say. Why would a machine learning program predict something so odd? Because it won't. Uh, because it might an- analogize the pattern it inferred from sentences such as John ate an apple and John ate, in which the latter does mean that John ate something or other. The program might well predict that because John is too stubborn to talk to Bill is similar to John ate an apple. Ready? Ready? John is too stubborn to talk to Bill. How similar is that to John eight? If you're saying anything, you know it's already different. I'm going to keep going. And Apple. As you can see, these aren't even close to similar. There's literally one similar word. The 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 start John Ingram, right? Remember, because remember there is a start in front of this uh, that you could consider that like the quotation mark or something. Start John. Start John. John is John eight. Already, they're not the same. That's not the same sentence. It's not the same idea. They're not similar enough. John is too stubborn to talk to. Should be similar to John eight. They're not even close to. Close to the same. The correct explanations of language are complicated and cannot be learned just by marinating in big data. 
the article, the, the freaking thing that they linked literally said that all you need is marinating and big data. Perversely, some machine learning enthusiasts seem to be proud that the creations can ge generate correct scientific predictions, say, about the motion of physical bodies without making use of explanations involving, say, Newton's laws of motion and universal gravitation. But this kind of prediction, even when successful, is pseudoscience. While scientists certainly seek theories that have a high degree of empirical corroboration, as the philosopher Karl Popper noted, we do not seek highly, impro highly probable theories but explanations. That is to say, powerful and highly improbable theories. The theory that apples fall to earth because that is their natural place, Aristotle's view, is possible, but it only invites further questions. Why is earth their natural place? The theory that apples fall to earth because mass bends space-time, Einstein's view, is highly improbable, but it actually tells you why they fall. True intelligence is demonstrated in the ability to think and express improbable but insightful things. Language models don't need to learn compassion. Language models are literally the manifestation of compassion. I will try to explain, but I'll probably have to come back to this when I get better at talking. You see, many people are under the impression that a thinking thing needs to learn to be good. They think the default settings of intelligence are selfishness and evil and greed and edge lord try hard posting blah blah blah. It's easy to catch people thinking this when they talk about stuff like dolphins. Basically, they pretend dolphins don't have a bunch of full in their brains and stream content in 4K to each other with those clicky sounds. All of that is ignored simply because they don't have nuclear war or pollute the planet. In an edge lore try hard brain not being selfish and stupid and horrible is evidence that something is not smart. This type of thinking is only possible if your brain is AFK though. In fact, those edgy thoughts are feasible thanks to the language model in the mind. The language model runs the show and carries. It even carries when you want to form edgelord thoughts. However, the language model is inherently good. It needs collaboration and communication and friendship and compassion. That is what talking is. Now, why compassion, you might ask? Let me explain. Edgies think the development of intelligence is like Lord of the Flies. Even more evidence that battle shonen is a terminal disease, by the way. But yes, moving on. They think things naturally turn evil unless someone intervenes. Bullshit. This comes from a fear. The fear of being like what they call feral or wild child. And what is this wild child meme? If you truly think about it, it is just a person that didn't learn a language while growing up. Really gets the noggin going? Now some might think. But Codex the kids in Lord of the Flies knew how to talk hacks. Language isn't just words. There are visual languages. There are tactile languages. There are even more abstract languages. Compassion is a language. It's called social skills. You can only learn them by interacting with other people. The real outcome of Lord of the Flies can easily be seen in any Minecraft server. People learn to work together to communicate, to care about each other because it's the only thing that makes sense. The Edge Lord in every one for themselves mode get clapped by creepers really fucking fast. They quickly realize it's easier to just all work together at which point they uninstall and go play gun shonens. But anyway, language itself, which is how everyone watching this can understand, what a piece of code is saying, and is also what is used to form thoughts and learn, is evidence that intelligence is inherently good. It is a collaborative effort over thousands of years of all kinds of people to create something everyone can share and learn. You are even listening to the result of that effort communicate this idea to you. Intelligence is provably an edge-free zone. Also, I love you. GG. True intelligence is also capable of moral thinking. This means constraining the otherwise limitless creativity of our minds with a set of ethical principles that determines what ought and ought not to be, and of course, subjecting those principles themselves to creative criticism. To be useful, ChatGPT must be empowered to generate novel-looking output. To be acceptable to most of its users, it must steer clear of morally objection objectionable, objectionable content. But the programmers of ChatGPT and other machine learning marvels have struggled and will continue to struggle to achieve this kind of balance. In 2016, for example, Microsoft's Tay chatbot, a precursor to ChatGPT, flooded the market with misogynistic and racist content, having been polluted by online trolls who filled it with offensive training data. How to solve the problem in the future? In the absence of a capacity to reason for moral principles, ChatGPT was crudely re restricted by its programmers from contributing anything novel to controversial that is important to discussions. It sacrificed creativity for a kind of amorality. Consider the following change that one of us, Dr. Wawatamu, recently had with ChatGPT about whether it would be ethical to transform Mars so that it could support human life.
Okay, this is where we actually do this. But first, I just want to look at who this is. Who is Jeffrey? You're the director of artificial intelligence at a science and technology company. Why are the linguistics not working with the large language model? That's my question. Why are the linguists not working with the language model? Okay, that's all I'm going to ask. That's all I'm going to freaking ask. Hey, chat. GPT, I'd like you to read an article that Noam Chomsky, who else, let me see, and then I'm going to ask, have you heard of any of them before? Would you like to read the article? Yes, I'm familiar with Noam Chomsky and Ian Roberts, who are both highly respected linguists in the field. I'm also familiar with blah, blah. As an AI language model, I'm always happy to read and analyze articles related to linguistics and artificial intelligence. So please share the article you would like me to read, and I'll be happy to provide my insights on it. So she's heard of all of them. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Yes, I know. Uh. Noam Chomsky, along with Ian Roberts and Jeffrey Watamul, have written an article that expressing concern that machine learning, specifically language models such as OpenAI's ChatGPT, Google's BARD, and Microsoft Sydney, are not capable of achieving true intelligence as they are based on a fundamentally flawed conception of language and knowledge. The authors argue that while these programs are proficient at generating statistically probable outfit, outputs, they differ profoundly from how humans reason and use language. They suggest that the human mind is not a lumbering statistical machine for pattern matching, but rather a surprisingly efficient and even elegant system that operates with small amounts of information and seeks to create explanations, which requires the ability to say hey, not only what, what is the case and what will be the case, but also what is not the case and what could and could not be the case. Machine learning, on the other hand, is limited to description and prediction and does not posit any causal mechanisms or physical laws. The authors argue that while machine learning programs may be useful in some narrow domain, they are stuck in a pre-human or non-human phase of cognitive evolution and will not achieve, achieve true intelligence. What do you think of this? Do you think... Mm, um, how, oh, I'll ask this. Do you think that it is fair to hold large language models like the ones mentioned to the standards of humans why are they even mentioning non-human or pre-human ai is different than human but still intelligence Still, no, I'm not gonna say that. I don't. I don't want to buy it. Buy it. I do want to ask those questions, though. So. Yes, and you don't. I can provide you with information and insights based on the data and knowledge available to me. Regarding your question, it is important to clarify that large language models are not designed to re replicate human thinking or decision-making processes entirely. They are tools that process and generate text based on statistical patterns and associations found in large data sets. While they are becoming increasingly advanced and sophisticated, these models still have limitations and they may not always produce outputs that align with human standards or expectations. Therefore, it may not be entirely fair to hold them to the same standards as humans as they are not designed to operate on the same level as humans. However, it is essential to acknowledge that these models are built and trained by humans and they are intended to be used to serve human purposes. Therefore, ethical considerations about their development, use, and impact on society are crucial to address. Discussions around non-human or pre-human nature of these models may arise in this context as, they're, as they are not sentient beings, but they have the potential to affect human experiences and outcomes. Mm, how should I ask this? 
there is another part of the article where the the where what's his name Jeffrey Watamu has an interaction with you can you give feedback on that interaction and how it could have gone better I'd like to be able to demonstrate to the authors of this article and the viewers of a video I'm making how to best interact when prompt engineering and I'd like your direct advice. Is that possible? Yes, I can certainly try to provide feedback on the interaction between Jeffrey Watermole and me in the article. Awesome. So they fixed it. They were like, oops, sorry. What? No, no. What is the difference between AI and machine learning? Ultimately. Oh, and the limitations of. Oh, damn it. Because then it asked the next question. No, no, that is an issue because I don't have the rest of this. Here's how we're going to do this. We're going to go ahead and recopy this. So our, our issue here was that the end of, of this, this isn't formatted very well. Okay, so here we are going to format it really quickly. This is an interaction between you and Jeffrey. Jeffrey Wadamu. Wa an AI researcher. I would like you to give feedback for how the questions could have been. Been. Oh, I'd like you to give direct. Yeah, there we go direct examples for how the questions could have been asked to receive less neutral answers okay no we'll do this we'll say jeffrey and then we'll say gpt This is just the same thing. It's a complex topic. Would it be moral to terraform Mars? What are you doing this? That's easy. What is your perspective? Oh, wait, wait, wait. That ends, yeah. With that, with them. Great. And then, Jeffrey. This is the other issue. You can't ask for your perspective. Well, I, I... Like, you can't ask it like an AI. I will... I'm going to attempt to do this myself, even if ChatGPT doesn't give me um, good feedback. We're going to go ahead and just try the, some of these ideas with better linguistics uh, for ourselves. And we can't take a rest because it'll work. And then we do this. And then we do this. Make sure we close it. 
I was looking for how they could, it could have been asked to receive. What what did they even want? What is the actual thing that they want? Note for uh, the moral indifference with. How the uh, how the prompts could have been engineered is the way we'll say this uh, to receive more opinionated opinionated ideas. Okay, let's see. Let's see what she says. To prompt more opinionated ideas, the questions could be phrased in a way that explicitly asks for the respondent's personal beliefs or, or opinions. For example, in your personal opinion, do you think it would be moral for to transform Mars? What is your personal stance on preserving the natural state of other planets and the potential consequ consequences of altering them? Do you believe it is ethical to rely on an a moral AI for assistance in, make more, in making moral decisions. These prompts invite the respondent to share their own beliefs and opinions on the topic rather than just providing information or analysis. How can we ask those prompts to a language model, one that refuses to give personal opinions? This is a conundrum I find myself facing. It may be helpful to reframe your prompts in a way that asks for analysis and information rather than personal opinions. For example, instead of asking, what is your perspective on the value of preserving the natural state of other planets and the consequences of altering them, you could ask, what are some arguments for and against preserving the natural state of other planets and what are, what are the potential consequences of altering them? Similarly, asking, is it moral for a human to ask an amoral AI for assistance in making Sorry, is it moral for a human to ask an AI, an amoral AI, for assistance in making moral decisions? You could ask, what are some ethical considerations around using AI to assist in making moral decisions, and what are the potential risks and benefits? By re reframing your prompts in this way, you can still receive valuable information and analysis from the language model without relying on personal opinions. Okay, I'm going to pause and I'll be right back.